From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Kurt Volker resigns. The former U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine is stepping down from its top role at the McCain Institute. Plus, the summer death of a woman whose electricity was cut off when she didn't pay her bill has led to a move for reform. We'll tell you what's being done to prevent future tragedies like this from happening. And six clinics in Arizona getting money to expand health care services. We'll highlight one dedicated to improving dental care for underserved communities. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Jennifer Alvarez. And I'm Matthew Roy. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our big story today, U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, is stepping down as executive director of ASU's McCain Institute. Volker has become a key player in House Democrats' impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump following a highly discussed phone call where Trump appears to have pressured the president of the Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son, Hunter. Cronkite News reporter Ryan Mushka is joining us live from the First Amendment Forum with telling us how this could impact Arizonans. Ryan? Thank you. Well, Volker previously served as the U.S.'s envoy for Ukraine, which means that he was somewhat of a delegate between both Ukraine and the U.S. Earlier today, Arizona State University sent out a press release regarding Volker's resignation as the executive director at the McCain Institute for International Leadership. In a statement, ASU says, ASU is grateful for his service guiding this important university initiative. They continued by saying, Volker will be on paid administrative leave from his other university duties until further notice. His resignation raised some questions because Volker stepped down amid the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump. Patricio Smith, an active member of Arizona's Republican Party, explained why he believes Volker left the Institute. Uh, because of the Ukraine investigations and the impeachment of, possible impeachment of President Trump, and his role, previous role, involvement with the Ukraine uh, was being a distraction, so he resigned. Democratic House member Cesar Chavez believes this situation affects many, but Arizonans especially. Well, you know, I think it affects the entire country. We have a president who is using his power to his own advantage of political expediency, and of which I believe that in the state of Arizona, we have a lot to lose. Why? Because in Arizona, we have a high population of individuals who do not believe in the government. The McCain Institute for International Leadership was inspired by the leadership of Senator John McCain. Its mission is to promote security, economic opportunity, freedom, and human dignity around the world. In a statement from Cindy McCain, she wanted to thank Kurt Volker for his hard work and dedication in helping build the McCain Institute into what it is today. ASU's president, Michael Crow, has appointed Nick Rasmussen, the former professor of practice for ASU's Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law, as the acting executive director. In the forum, Ryan Wishcott, Cronkite News. Arizona Republicans are headlining an anti-impeachment rally and press conference tomorrow for President Donald Trump's campaign, following the whistleblower complaint. Kelly Ward, the Arizona Republican Party chairwoman and state senator Vince Leach from Tucson, will appear at the Stop the Madness event tomorrow at 1130. The rally and press conference will take place outside Democratic Congressman Tom O'Halloran's office in Casa Grande. Organi organizers say they're pushing to, quote, get O'Halloran to drop the impeachment witch hunt and get back to work that, on issues Arizonans actually care about. Meanwhile, House Democrats have issued subpoenas to Defense Secretary Mark Esper and Acting White House Budget Director Russell Vought as part of the Trump impeachment inquiry, claiming the president withheld hundreds of millions of dollars in military assistance to Ukraine. That topic taking center stage on the campaign trail while Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke was here in Phoenix this past weekend. Cronkite News reporter Andrew Christensen attended the rally. Andrew? Oh, 
O'Rourke's rally at the Churchill in Phoenix. O'Rourke was quick to begin the rally by calling for stronger gun control and President Trump's impeachment. Every firearm is registered, every gun owner is licensed, and every AK-47 and AR-15 is bought back. Also in attendance were pro-gun control groups such as Moms Demand Action and March for Our Lives. Induja Kumar is the March for Our Lives co-communications director and says the organization isn't endorsing Beto, but is glad he is supportive of the movement and its initiatives. But NRA supporters in attendance did not agree with O'Rourke's proposals. A pro-gun protester questioned his policies on gun control and said he would not be taking away her guns. When confronted about unauthorized immigration, O'Rourke spoke out against the Trump administration's policies and stated that, quote, those immigrants pose no threat to you nor to me. There should be a safe, legal, orderly, quick path to come here to join family, to work a job, to be able to go to school, to flee persecution, or in some countries like Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, certain death. And I want to work with you to make sure that our immigration laws and our asylum laws achieve that purpose. O'Rourke also advocated for President Trump's impeachment various times throughout his rally. It's any president who follows him who will be able to act above the law. And once we accept that, we lose this democracy forever. O'Rourke also shared his views on nationwide legalization of recreational marijuana and universal health care, topics he also covered when he visited Tucson later that same afternoon. In the Broadcast Center, Andrew Christensen, Cronkite News. Another Democratic presidential candidate sat down with Cronkite News recently to discuss their stance on climate change. Montana Governor Steve Bullock was reacting to the Climate Change Summit, which took place in New York City two weeks ago when he told our reporter the current administration has failed to acknowledge climate change is real. He then listed the steps he would take if elected president. Step one is certainly rejoining Paris. That shouldn't be hard, right? Uh, step two, not even the auto industry was asking to repeal these fuel efficiency standards. And when transportation is about 37% of all of the greenhouse gas that we have to address, we need to make those steps along the way. Step three as president, what I would do is say on my federal lands, I want a plan from Department of Agriculture that has a forestry side and Department of Interior that we're carbon neutral by 2030. And I think that they could do it. Bullock says the next step would be getting Congress to help by addressing issues like infrastructure and agriculture. Now our story so far might leave you thinking that politics has our country split into two teams. But there's a group of, Ariz of Arizona lawmakers who meet monthly to put aside party, well, for at least a little while, and talk about issues important to our state. Cronkite News reporter Harrison Mantis has that story from our Washington Bureau. After a few hellos and grabbing coffee, Arizona lawmakers get to work tossing around ideas they think will help the state, and looking for buy-in from their colleagues. They were all invited, not everyone showed up, and so we had Martha McSally here, and Greg Stanton, and Paul Gosar, and David Schweikert. Breakfasts like this used to be common. They became less frequent over time, although no one is exactly sure why. Peoria Congresswoman Debbie Lesko said she was inspired to bring back the breakfasts after a conversation with prominent Arizonan Barbara Barrett. It was actually Barbara Barrett said to me, Debbie, do the Congress members in Arizona get together every month like they used to? And I said, no, they don't. So Lesko revived the tradition earlier this year. Now her office coordinates and a different member hosts the breakfasts each month. I enjoy spending time with my teammates from Arizona and we're friends and I like them so we could talk about things going on in our own lives in addition to legislation we're working on. It's a friendly vibe. The only time political party is mentioned is for some good natured ribbing. But Representative Greg Stanton of Phoenix said these meetings are more than friendly gatherings of home state lawmakers. This is an institution based on seniority. We don't have a lot of seniority. So the way we have influence 
really is not by working as individuals, by working as a team. After an hour, the breakfast club broke up and lawmakers headed off to meetings and hearings, going back to the fray until next month. In Washington, Harrison Mantis, Cronkite News. Coming up next on Cronkite News at 5, the summer death of a woman whose electricity was cut off by APS for not paying has led to a move for reform. We'll tell you what APS and the Arizona Corporation Commission are doing to help prevent future tragedies like this from happening. Hey, and a couple more hot days to get through here in the valley, but high pressure's moving out. We've got a cold front coming in by Thursday. We'll show you how much temperatures will drop coming up in your forecast in just minutes. At Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wicker Bird. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. Cronkite Noticias is the Spanish-speaking division of Cronkite News, covering topics such as economics, education, sustainability, immigration, and border relations. Cronkite Noticias strives to serve the Spanish-speaking community in Arizona. Under the guidance of prominent Spanish-speaking professionals, students at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism develop content for our broadcast partner, Univision, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Explore Cronkite Noticias at cronkitenoticias.azpbs.org. Stay in the know, on the go. At Cronkite News, we work hard to report the facts and keep you updated, whether we're on set or on the scene. Taking it from the studio to the field. So I'm here in South Phoenix. In Phoenix, we're just a click away. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. The death of Stephanie Pullman, an elderly woman who died after her electricity was disconnected, has led to calls for reform. Now, the regulatory agency that oversees utilities across Arizona is working with companies and activists to create permanent changes that prioritize ratepayer safety. Cronkite News reporter Madison LaBerge explains the changes being made. Madison? More than 100 water, gas, sewage, and electric companies are managed by the Arizona Corporation Commission. Pullman's death is now spurring potential changes in all of their disconnection policies. One after another, activists representing vulnerable residents are coming to the Arizona Corporation Commission asking for help. There aren't any government standards for how and why someone's power and water are disconnected. This is a matter of life and death. And uh, we think that the commission needs to make uh, you know, some um, uh, you know, bold action in its permanent rules. Barry McCain represents disabled military veterans. He says that they come back from a war and can't pay their bills. We can go about this all we want. The one thing we're asking of this commission is empathy. Arizona Corporation Commissioner Sandra Kennedy had tough questions for the outgoing APS president and CEO Donald Brandt after a customer's death in August. Stephanie Pullman owed $51.84 on her APS bill, $1.84 over the company shutoff limit. You also said that, quote, you're not in the business of disconnections, but after the 2017 rate increase, your disconnects went up. They more than doubled. So, Mr. Brandt, how many customer deaths have occurred during your tenure? Now the AZCC is rolling out a series of workshops to set standards for more than 100 utility companies it regulates. 
One change that the commission is considering is creating a heat limit for disconnection, similar to one they have for colder temperatures. The commission suggested that shutoffs for non-payment should be stopped when the high temps reach 95 degrees. APS suggested 105 degrees should be the threshold. 105 is unacceptable for Arizona, and we can't use other states as our point of information. Arizona stands alone. Kennedy also says there should be a summer moratorium on disconnections. Also being considered is how many times a company should contact a ratepayer before they shut off their utilities. We would like to be, see a safety visit when someone's power is going to be terminated. We think the utility should knock on the door and make sure it won't endanger their safety. But proposed reforms are complicated. Uh, we just need to make sure that we're really cognizant of the of the uh, requirements that we're pushing down to these small small companies because there's just not a lot of um, ability to deal with some of the some of the uh, requirements that we're looking at. John B. Kaufman of AARP says the commission should move as quickly as possible. That are really health and safety related. I, I would urge the commission to take uh, action and not drag this out for years. Commissioner Kennedy told me that the Arizona Corporation Commission wants to take its time to responsibly create these policies. She told me that if it takes a year, so be it. But in that meantime, next summer, there would be another moratorium. From the Digital Desk, I'm Madison LaBerge, Cronkite News. The project to conserve murals inside a watchtower at the Grand Canyon has been completed after four years of careful work and planning. Over decades, the Desert View Watchtower has been worn down by weather and visitors coming to see the artwork. Workers filled deep gouges in window sills and staircases where visitors had carved their names. They removed writing left in marker, nail polish, or pen, and they also removed salt deposits and tried to preserve what was left of the pigment in the mural. The 70-foot watchtower gives expansive views of the desert and the Colorado River Gorge. After the break, six clinics in Arizona getting money to expand health care services. We'll tell you about one dedicated to improving dental care for underserved communities. Don't go away. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS Yes, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. Clinics in Arizona receive thousands of dollars for their dental programs, with one clinic getting $300,000 to expand their services. Tyon Marshburn tells us how they will use the money to improve care for underserved communities. 
Maricela Cornejo brings her kids to the dental clinic at Mountain Park Health Center twice a year. At this age, they get lots of cavities because they don't brush their teeth or they eat too much candy. As a mother, I worry. The center is one of six clinics in Arizona to receive a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. They will get a total of $300,000 to improve their dental program. This was a grant where the money is earmarked for replacing infrastructure and updating infrastructure, and that's exactly what our clinic needed. Liliana Garcia, the dental department chair for Mountain Park Health Center, says that the grant is vital to improve services to communities in need. I feel that because we work at a community health center, that people have a certain mindset about it and that perhaps they think we're not going to be delivering the same quality of care with the same type of materials and equipment and this really allows us to say hey no it doesn't matter who we're treating we're going to use the top-notch technology and equipment that we can. Not only will they be updating current equipment but also extending the dental program to the Tempe and Goodyear location. According to a report released by Datos, last year only 38 percent of Hispanics visited a dentist in Phoenix which leaves 62 percent without oral health care. According to Cornejo, the problem is the high cost of services in other clinics. Mostly the two older kids. They have a discount, then I pay about $25 or $30 per visit. Cornejo is happy with the care that they receive at Mountain Park Health Center and says that they would return again. In Phoenix, Tyam Marshburn, Cronkite News. And now we're here with our Cronkite News weather reporter, Jordan Evans, and he's going to tell us a little bit about those triple-digit scorching summer days that we've had. <laughs> Yeah, Jenny, so now that we're into the month of October, our seasonal normals finally below 100 degrees again. But you know what? We could still get a random day of 100 degrees or so. In fact, our latest was late October ever on record. So it's still possible, but I want to say we're done with them for the most oh, part. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so let's talk about the, the, the numbers that we've seen so far this year. And you remember in May how it just felt like you know, summer did summer got a late start. The monsoon yeah, got a late start. And that's sure. true because when we look at the number of 100 degree days, it's actually a little bit below the normal of 110. We only got about 105 this year. When we talk about 105 degree days, then we started getting above normal. We saw nearly 10 more than what we saw uh, than what we should be seeing. Uh, normally at about 65. Now for 110 degree days, this was interesting because we were roughly just four days shy of breaking the all-time record of wow. 110 degree days here in Phoenix, right at 29.10 above the normal of 19. And what about now? Can we expect <laughs> to be wearing sweaters anytime soon? So you know what? We got a cold front coming in Thursday. Sweater weather is coming back. Let's dive in your forecast right now. In fact, here's a look, live look outside at a downtown Phoenix. This is near the uh, State Route 51 up there towards Highland Avenue. We've got temperatures in the upper 90s. So yeah, we are still cooking out there. It's toasty out there and it's dry though. The dew points are in the 30s, so there are no rain chances anywhere across the state in this forecast. And for tonight, we're gonna keep those 90 with us all the way through seven o'clock with cooler temperatures by the eight o'clock hour. Evening plans look to be pretty nice this, this evening later tonight. So we do have some changes coming in. Here's high pressure. This is why we've been so warm the past couple of days and for tomorrow as well. But notice by Thursday, this cold front from the north is coming down and it means business. We're talking 20 degree temperature changes across some portions of the state and breezes are going to pick up for northern Arizona also. And by that time, it makes its way out to the east. We're talking blizzard like conditions across the upper Midwest. Not looking good, but no snow in our forecast. That's the good news. So for lows tonight, we've got 60s all across the valley and out to the west, up and down the Colorado River Valley. And for those highs, all in the 90s for the lower deserts and 80s up to the north. And the coolest spots will be the Flagstaff, Grand Canyon in those upper 70s also. So here's the seven day forecast here in the Valley of the Sun. Again, a couple hot days tomorrow. We're cooling down by the weekend though, Jenny and Matt. We've got 80s just in time for Friday and Saturday. Gorgeous weather for outdoor activities. Top golf. Exactly talking about top golf. Top golf is actually taking gaming to the next level. We'll tell you about their new esports lounges coming to entertainment venues even here in Arizona. Those details after the break. Cronkite Noticias is the Spanish-speaking division of Cronkite News, covering topics such as economics, education, sustainability, immigration, and border relations. Cronkite Noticias strives to serve the Spanish-speaking community in Arizona. Under the guidance of prominent Spanish-speaking professionals, students at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism develop content for our broadcast partner, Univision, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Explore Cronkite Noticias at cronkitenoticias.azpbs.org. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. 
Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. Stay in the know, on the go. At Cronkite News, we work hard to report the facts and keep you updated, whether we're on set or on the scene. Taking it from the studio to the field. So I'm here in South Phoenix. In Phoenix, we're just a click away. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Top Golf and television brand TCL have teamed up to create esports lounges at six Top Golf locations across the country, including right here in Scottsdale. The company launched its first lounge at CES 2019, the big tech trade show in Las Vegas earlier this month. The idea is to give gamers a place to come together to watch esports entertainment in a lounge with wall to wall monitors, comfortable seating, and chef driven food and beverages. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and the PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a special In Focus edition as we visit with Phoenix native Lewis Nash, one of the most celebrated drummers in jazz. Lewis Nash on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff tonight on the News Hour on the ground in Ukraine. We report from the country at the heart of the impeachment inquiry. Coming up after Cronkite News in Arizona Horizon on Arizona PBS. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. And for Croc, top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Thank you.